Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another episode of the show. Now we're going to do some uh, Argentinian wine. Now, a little backstory on this. Um, the uh, people from Finca del Origen reached out to me back in like uh, July or August of last year uh, about doing a Skype interview. And uh, the winemaker was going to be up here in Texas, in San Antonio, uh, while I was going to be in France. So we weren't able to like hook up live. Uh, they sent me the wine uh, between my schedule and their schedule for the past few months and then kind of like forgetting about it, unfortunately. Um, haven't really had a chance to really connect with them. So I contacted them this week and said, hey, you know, I still got these four bottles of wine that you sent me. I haven't had them yet. Um, can we do Skype interview? And of course, it's harvest time down in Argentina. So they're like, we don't really have time to do that. So... Um, they told me to go ahead and just do the reviews, and we're going to do that. So hopefully in the future, we can do some Skype. Um, but uh, in the meantime, I'm going to record uh, reviews. So this is the first one. Uh, so the next, so this and the next three are going to be uh, all about their wines. So crossing fingers that um, this is all good. Matter of fact, uh, before we go too far, I need to make sure that uh, I've got at least something where I can talk about how much this stuff is, you know, how, how much you buy it for. Yeah. How about more? Sometimes, you know, when you go from iPad to computer, um, the, uh, it's kind of, it's kind of hard to, uh, get things like, you know, shopping. I want to buy it. Snooth Wine Searcher. How about I just use Wine Searcher? That's usually pretty decent. And then I can, uh, it's probably going to be about the same price, but we'll type in this. All right, so what do I have here? I have the 2009, I believe. 2009 Finca Origin uh, Reserva uh, Torontes. And make sure I, no, not Torrents. All right, search that. All right, so the uh, <clears throat> Torontes, this is from Argentina, from the Salta region of Argentina, specifically the uh, Valle de Cafayate. Yeah, I kind of looked at that ahead of time, so I didn't butcher it too much. Um, Torontes is a um, white grape. We don't really do too much of that. We don't really talk about it too much, but it is a white grape. Um, and I forgot to pull up some information so I don't uh, mess things up. I believe it's actually native to Argentina. I don't really, because it says it's an Argentinian white grape varietal. Um, yes, it is. It is, it is uh, native. Now, this particular one, um, I know from the fact sheet, is, uh, well, it says it's Toronto there, but there are later ones talk about, there you go. So this is 100% uh, Toronto's Riojano. Now, I don't know what the differences are real quick. Three varieties exist. Riojano's most common, San Juanino, and Mendocino. Hmm. Okay. Don't really, uh, don't really know too much about it. I won't get too too technical about it, but there's three there's three versions of Torontes. This is the one that's most used. Um, let's see. Try to find uh, pricing. Looks like you can get this for anywhere for average price of eleven dollars. So, you know, ten ten to you know eight eight to twelve dollar range on this. Um, and we'll check it out. Uh, it already feels very, um, or I can already get the aromatics off of it. So, let's see what it's like. 
a lot of aromatics going on here. I've got floral, I've got cantaloupe, uh, like cantaloupe rind. Maybe a little peach, apple. So we got some stone fruit. A lot of stuff going on here. Really nice nose. I always like to when I get when I get white wines that really got have some nice noses to them. I want to say I got a little bit of wax out of this. All right. Anyway, uh, I like the nose a lot. Really golden color. You can probably really see that with all the lighting I've got on going on in here. Like the background, by the way. That's the um, Petit Pouch background. That was the other thing I was going to mention in the last episode. Uh, plus, so I got kind of hiding off the side here. Um, that's the wine cellar of the uh, the chateau. That, depending on which um, records I guess you're looking at, was founded in 1337. It was, you know, the the chateau itself, the building was uh, founded in the 1330s of some point. Um, anyway, that's what the background is. This is a really nice nose. I, I could actually sit here and, and, and kind of linger on it for a while, but running short on time, I don't want to go as long as the last episode, so let's get right into it. Two things that strike me first about this wine. One, high acid, very acidic. And two, there's this bitterness to it. So I don't know what that is. I don't want to say it's a saltiness to it. I, mean, I know salt, uh, I looked at the word and it's kind of got this saltiness to it, but it also kind of a bitterness to it. I'm not really sure if I'm digging that part, but um, I get more of, of what I got from the bouquet. Um, though I get, I think the floral element really kind of uh, becomes a little more prominent. Um, the, the cantaloupe and the cantaloupe rind uh, is not as, as prominent, but it's there. Honey, maybe? Maybe a little bit of honey to it? It's pretty good. Um, I'm drinking at room temperature, so it's not going to be chilled. If it was chilled, it would, it would calm down a little bit, I think. But I think it's pretty well made. Um, it's a $10 bottle of wine. I think if you found this anywhere, uh, your local grocery store, at your local wine shop, I would definitely buy it. You know, especially because this is... This isn't, you know, your typical, well, Sauvignon Blanc, it's Chardonnay, it's Pinot Grigio, and, you know, the, the, the major ones, or, or Riesling. <laughs> um, anyway, um, you know, this is one of those varietals that people don't really uh, go after. Now, what this does remind me of is Viognier, um, a little bit. It's got some of the same characteristics as Viognier. And I think in, in here they were talking about Gewürztraminer, uh, Muscat, I guess. Uh, Gewürz also, uh, I, I can see that, but it, it kind of gives me more the Viognier type of uh, characteristics. But, you know, it, it's got that type of stuff going on. I think it's pretty good. Um, I'd give it an 88. Uh, I think you should, if you find it, I think you should buy it. Uh, think of origin. It's from Argentina. Um I didn't really look at their uh, history as much, but uh, they've been there for at least a little while. Let's see if I can quickly go to the website and uh, and see if they've got some uh, some things that I can glean off of this. Um, all right, they say that they're a young winery. Uh, they have something to do with Chile. All right, so it's the first Chilean winery to invest in Argentina. So I'm going to guess that, uh, you know, they've got some, um, they had, so they, let's see, it started in 2002, coming to the end marketing. Okay, so yeah, fairly young. 
a fairly young company. Um, they uh, export 90% of their production to 37 countries around the world. So it looks like they do quite a bit. They also have the Santa Carolina brand in Chile, the Carolina Wine Brands, USA. There's a couple of their other websites. Um, I really were, I'm really hoping to be able to uh, get some Skype interviews going on with these guys. I think it would be really cool. Um, the, the time zone won't be too much different because we're kind of on the same side of the world. But um, if you can find it, buy it. That's going to do it. I'll have a link below to the website. Um, click the links above to friend me up. Hit the donate button. Send me 10 bucks. Buy another bottle of wine or whatever. A dollar, thousand dollars, whatever you want to do. It doesn't matter. Or nothing. Hey, you know, ain't, ain't no thing. Um, and um, that's going to do it. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and one last thing. The Wine Century Club. Yeah, I want to get make sure I talk about this. The Wine Century Club. Okay, so this is something that um, you didn't have to pay for. There's no, I mean, it's just kind of like the honor system. If you look up the Wine Century Club and uh, you go to their website, there'll be a uh, spreadsheet for you to download. And basically what you do is you just mark down that you've, you've had a wine with that type of grape in it. Now, it's not, it's not that you have had a wine that's 100% Torontes um, or 100% Alicante Bouchette, okay, or something like that, but it has to have something in it. So when you hit like blends, especially like Bordeaux, you know, French blends, Italian blends, um, California blends where they have like, you know, 1% of some weird grape you've never heard of, okay, it counts, okay? So um, I reached 100 at some point in time in the past uh, couple months, about it was January sometime. I was at Max's Wine Dive. Cool place to go if you want to check it out. Uh, I'll have a link to, to them down below. A link to that, too. A link to the Century Club. And uh, I was having an Italian wine, and I realized, and I pulled up the uh, spreadsheet, realized that uh, I had reached 100 uh, on my visit there. One, one of the, whatever wine, it was, um, uh, dang it, uh, Valpolicella. It was a Valpolicella, so... Anyway, I mean, I probably have already had the varietals before, but I hadn't recorded them. So um, I probably had reached 100 maybe two, three, four months ago, but I hadn't recorded everything because you kind of go by memory. But um, it's just kind of cool. You know, you've had, you know, it's not as easy as you think it is. Uh, most people probably have had in their life 20, maybe 30, maybe 40 in just normal wine drinking. But when you pursue different wines, you start getting that 100. Um I'm going to guess that I'm probably closer to 110 right now. Um, I, kind of, I kind of just stopped counting after that. Anyway, um, that's going to do it. Um, like I said, Wine Century Club, buy the wine, click links, you know, friend me up, websites below, donation. That's it. I'll see everyone again next time.